I don't know if this is, at one time, I won't mention her name because she's still alive. She used to be a critic for the uh, Post-Dispatch. And she thought all of these things that I were doing were just loaded with sexual contents. Oh, that the smokestacks were penis symbols, the smoke was ejaculation, this and that, you know, and she read all the, it went on and on and on, and she claimed that in every painting I did, there was this element of the covertly sexual, if you like, see. I don't, I, I don't quite buy it, but maybe there's something there. Who knows, you know. <laughs> it wasn't intentional, then. It wasn't, it wasn't in my mind, I can assure you, when I did it. But people have a habit of kind of reading. It's obviously things. in her mind. Yeah, they didn't want to read. <laughs> <laughs> A boy was walking his bumblebee, he tied it to a string. The sky was lit up with violet light, a bird began to sing a song of sixpence. Ernestine Betzberg. When I came to St. Louis, I was Mrs. Osford. And I didn't like it at first, and then I thought, oh, well, what the hell? <laughs> and that's who I am, so, you know. But you're Ernestine Betzberg. Oh, yeah. I've always been Ernestine right. Betzberg. Right. Representational painter. How do you like that? Oh boy. Look who wrote that. I'm noticing that. That's amazing. Yeah. And but we say in the but in the realm of the abstract, Arthur dominates the scene. Oh, that's very good. That's really so I think we got the best of both worlds here. That's wonderful. But you know, we both are still working and thinking about painting. And that's what we've done yeah. all our lives, and that's what we both wanted, and I think that's, it was equal, you know. But we've never had a studio together. We've never. always had our own We've always been independent. That's right. And uh, we never made a comment about the other person's work unless we're invited to look and say, what do you think about this? But uh, it was very independent because we started that way, and we're still that way. Tell you, a number of years ago, 
I got interested in, in text, and I think it was for two basic reasons. Number one, letters have a fantastic shape in themselves, just as an abstract shape, if you like. And then when they add up to a, some sort of a message, you're doubling the impact. It's a kind of a, oh, it, it, it's an effect that works doubly because it's not only an abstract collection of shapes, but it has a, a meaning. Let's see, this is a little bit corny, but let's say the like word mother. You look at the word mother, and you, you can see M-O-T-H-E-R. But then it begins to bring back the idea of motherhood and all that crap. It sounds corny, but the, the two reinforce each other. So using that idea of a sort of a double-edged sword, the illusion, the thing I allude to, and the visual experience of seeing these hieroglyphics, which we call English, I think adds up to something that you can, for me, do exciting things with if you can get the right combinations, color and all that. And another thing too, I like to, there's a French word called uh, bricoler, a bricoleur. A bricoleur is someone who likes to put things together, tinkerer. Alexander would be, Alexander Calder would be a good example of a, a, a bricoleur because he takes a piece of wire and he twists it into a figure or a symbol of some sort. But he's always fooling around with the idea of taking something and giving it another identity. And that's what I try to do with the, with the, uh, the text that I've been using and so on. Yeah.